hello and welcome to the Cisco Learning Network podcast. This episode, we're going to be featuring a discussion about the current state of Cisco certifications from the Cisco Champion Radio podcast. The Cisco Champion Radio podcast is a Cisco technology podcast series bringing together Cisco experts and champions for unscripted conversations on technology solutions. We'd like to present this discussion to you because it features Cisco Distinguished Services Engineer Joe Clark answering questions from industry professionals about Cisco certifications, including the reasons behind the portfolio change, changes you might have missed to Cisco certifications, and what future changes may be coming. Cisco Champion Radio host Amy Lee San Juan kicks off this conversation by introducing Joe and the three IT professionals that he will be speaking with. This is Amy Lee San Juan, and it is always my distinct pleasure to welcome you back to another informative episode of Cisco Champion Radio, where we cover topics across the Cisco portfolio to give you the insights you want and need. Today, we are diving into the wonderful world of Cisco certifications, and to help us drive the conversations, of course, we have an amazing cast of Cisco Champion hosts and the, with a capital T-H-E, Cisco expert. All right, so let's get started with a round of introductions. Joe, we'll start with you. Can you tell us more about what you do at Cisco? My name is Joe Clark. I'm the distinguished engineer at Cisco working in our learning and certification business. I've been at Cisco now just about 23 years. Started right out of college into our technical assistance center doing network management support. But I have a computer science background, so programming, automation, all of that fun stuff was what interested me. And so I I jumped in almost immediately in hacking our network management products, extending them, patching them. And now I do a lot still with network automation. Infrastructure is code, what they call the uh, model-driven programmability. I work also in the Internet Engineering Task Force, where I help on some of the Yang-based standardizations. Yeah, I, I guess that's probably me in a nutshell right there. So the simpler question would have been, what don't you do? <laughs> oh, there's a, there's, there's a lot. That, that, uh... All right. Dan, you're up next. Who are you? What do you do? Sure, I got to follow that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Dan Kelcher, I am a senior network engineer with Sleep Number. So I get to play with switches and routers and do nothing anywhere near as impressive. Nice. I believe I knew that you worked at Sleep Number, so I'm going to have to ping you offline about that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Meredith, tell us about yourself. All right. I'm Meredith Rose. I work for WWT. I'm a senior consulting systems engineer based in San Diego. Since we're talking about certifications today, I'll mention I have an old school CCIE route and switch now known as Enterprise Infrastructure, for almost 22 years now. And more recently, I passed the DevNet Associate exam. My Twitter handle, if you'd like to follow me, is Mer3DithRose. So it's M-E-R-3-D-I-T-H-R-O-S-E. Very nice. Uh, Jonathan, other than falling out of bed, what do you do? For, what, what's what's <laughs> up bad about falling out of bed? I love it. Okay, no. Uh, my name's Jonathan Mahadi. Uh, I'm part of uh, BHP, uh, working in the mining sector. I also have a CCIE, but in old school wireless, so that's enterprise wireless for now. And uh, I work in more design and governance at the moment, which is actually a lot of fun. But I do various things across different verticals within the networking sections. Very cool. Joe, kicking it back to you, can you give us a little introduction and background on what we're talking about today? Uh, absolutely, sure. So thanks. It's good to meet everyone here. I also have a sleep number bed. I'm jealous. So about 28 years ago, we started this little thing called the CCIE, the Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert. I guess it got a little bit popular. And so we spun up more certifications over time, the CCNA, the Cisco Certified Network Associate, the Network Professional, and thousands or so of certified individuals later, we arrive at February 24th of 2020. Leading up to that, we decided or we looked at our certification portfolio and said a few things. One, it has certainly garnered a lot of industry recognition. We look at job descriptions in the Indeeds and the Monsters and the LinkedIn's, and we see that people are looking for Cisco certified individuals, and that's fantastic. And and we've also seen that some of our competitors copy some of the ideas around our certifications, and so it's obviously flattering. We, We see that we've made a dent in the marketplace. However, you can't just rest on your laurels. You can't just say, well, we've done well for the past 20, at the time, 25 years. What's next? In fact, we gave out stickers 25 years of 
excellence on the 25th anniversary of the CCIE. And I was at one of the IETF meetings and someone who's notorious for poking the bear said, so what, 25 years of excellence, now you're done? No more excellence? And it was a good point because we looked at the portfolio and said, okay, we've had these 25 years of excellence, what's next? How do we keep it excellent? And so we went back to kind of the drawing board and we looked at things like the complexity of going through and getting the certification, how monolithic some of these certifications were in terms of the technologies and, and what people had to know, how useful were they, and what are they doing to track some of the current industry trends. And we redesigned some things, we simplified quite a bit of the certification and training portfolio. We emphasized flexibility, both making it easier for us to add in new technology and revamp things, as well as individuals to make it more flexible so that they felt they were getting the certification that they cared about. And then that brings us back to that February date, February 24th, 2020, where we launched this new set of certifications. And I think Jonathan, you mentioned you had, or, or maybe it was you, Meredith, who said you had the CCIE route switch and now it's become enterprise infrastructure. So we retooled, we renamed some of the certifications. We didn't take away anything that anyone had earned, but we made this new set of certifications something that's much easier to kind of wrap your head around, less upfront exams or prerequisites that you have to take, more flexibility and agility. And we added one of the key elements that's permeating the network engineers in all technology spaces. And that is this automation and programmability, which I mentioned is very near and dear to my heart. So now you see this new set of certifications, still the same levels you know and love, the associate professional and the expert, but we've also created different realms to kind of recognize that there are different job roles. And we've created a realm for the software developer. And those are our new DevNet certs. And congratulations, Meredith, on your DevNet associate. I myself dipped my toe into that water. I got my DevNet associate and I'm kind of trying to convince myself to do some online proctoring for the next level. And we also created a realm for the cyber ops engineer because we recognize that cybersecurity is kind of a job role in and of itself, where you have the security network engineer as an example who builds the walls around the castle. And the cyber ops person knows that no matter how big or thick you build these walls, someone is going to come in and mess stuff up. And so they try to think like the hacker. So we created these new realms. We created that flexibility. We created a way for us to keep adding more certifications, more training as we recognize industry trends shift. And so we're into the almost 28th year of Cisco certifications. And I think the excellence is absolutely still there. So thanks for hosting this and let's see where we go with this. Cisco certifications, action. All right, well, I have a question. So that's a great history of how the certification program started and evolved and all the work you've put into it to make it relevant. I found for my CCA personally, it was great for opening doors, new career opportunities. It's been great for my company to have a, be a Cisco partner with all the certifications our employees have. How do you educate the employers and the partners and customers that these newer certifications like DevNet, for example, are extremely valuable and are basically like a, almost like a currency for your knowledge. Like they really should have value, but not everybody knows about those certs yet. So what's your plan for kind of promoting that? Well, we have a few ways of doing it. The first thing is we have to show up ourselves. We're an IT shop at Cisco. We've got our own IT department. We've got our technical assistance center. We've got roles around instructors, roles around people building training content, our DevNet developer advocates. All of those people, as we hire them, as we bring them in, we want to be able to put on those job descriptions, hey, you should be, say, DevNet certified, or you should have these certifications. So we've done that. Back when the CCIE came out, one of the things we did, you mentioned you were with a partner, we said, hey, partners, we want you to get specialized, certified, and, and earn these like gold specializations or, or certifications. And so we're going to continue, and we have been continuing to do that with our new certs. The other thing we're doing internally is training our individuals on these new skills. And if and when they, they leave to go out in the job market and they take that with them, we hope that the employers will start to see the value that they bring and be encouraged to say, well, if I want to emulate that person, 
I want what they have. I want them to have some experience, obviously, and it'd be great if they had this or that certification. Then the other thing we're doing is reaching out through channels like to LinkedIn, to Indeed, some of these job sites, and working with them to see how we can get more of these new certifications highlighted or featured so that employers, I should say, know that, hey, these are not just trendy certifications. There's some value behind them. And as well, we're using the Acclaim system for digital credential management now. That encourages people to add like, oh, I just passed DevNet Associate, add it to my LinkedIn or add it to my profile. So people know that person has this particular set of certifications. A lot of it is going to be some of that grassroots or moving in that organic way. And some of it we can kind of help force with things like our partner specialization. And then we're going to see more of a demand. And as those partners, again, as we build more of a workforce of people who are certified, then as they move out and spread, they'll take with it some of that certification value. Oh, great. Makes sense. Just to follow up on that, Joe, you know, a lot of our workplaces are becoming a bit more inclusive and diverse, or I'm working towards diversity within the business. I get regularly asked, how do I get into networking? So I always mention the importance of certificates and getting into the different tech verticals, and that kind of opens the door, as Meredith said. So what's your take on that? Well, we've got a program now, I think I'm going to butcher the name. Essentially, it's a, a switch to IT. It's designed to reach out to people who might not be your typical IT certification or even just IT audience and try to see, hey, do you have an interest in solving problems? Do you have an interest in technology? We can help get you started and start having you learn some of these skills. Forget certification for the moment, just learning the skills and bring people in. And we're going to target that at underserved areas, underserved communities as well because we also want to diversify not just the background people have coming into IT but also just the demographic where people are who people are we want to see that IT is inclusive especially networking is inclusive of, of a number of different people and the other thing I tell people if they're interested is again put the certification to the side for the moment and figure out what it is you like to do what drives you what interests you and start learning and especially playing or doing in areas like that that. And so when we talk certification, sometimes we highlight the certification part. Like February 24th, we released new certifications. And we absolutely did, but we also released the training. And with the training came labs. And we really want to encourage people to practice as much as they preach. If they say, I have these certifications, have you really put the time behind it to be able to learn that and to practice it and to really understand and feel like you can talk to it? If someone said, hey, can you go do this or help me? with this that that person can do. And we want to encourage them to also give back in areas like the Cisco Learning Network, answer questions and help people out. Again, foster that idea of an inclusive community. The Cisco Learning Network that Joe just referred to here is a social learning community focused on IT networking technologies. Our mission is to provide learning tools, IT training resources, and industry guidance to anyone interested in building an IT career through Cisco certifications. If you're interested in learning more, please visit www.ciscolearningnetwork.com. We, we've got a few things going on. Admittedly, we can always do more and we could always find new areas to reach out. And I think now what you're seeing is we're really trying to put a focus on that to make sure that people know that networking is important no matter where you do it, on-prem or in the cloud. And we have training, we have ways of getting you connected, getting you up to speed, upskilled, whatever you want to call it, and being able to then translate that into something that can hopefully get you a job, a better job, or move you up in your organization. Just, just a side note, Joe, I really appreciate all the commentary. You just touched some points that are already like close to my heart. And one of the things that you know I've talked to people about is that we need to build from the ground up. So like get to the high schools or, or the secondary schools and work from that level. And I think that's another area that we could probably look at as well for this sort of program. But that's great to see. That's a great point, and I'm glad you brought it up. We do a lot with our networking academy to reach to some of those high schools to get them encouraged in not just networking, selfishly some Cisco networking. I guest lecture at North Carolina State University, which is close to me, and I often tell the students there that you're 
lucky. I mean, I wish I would have had this kind of, not me, forget me, I'm, I'm lame, but had like this kind of vendor participation in my college, my university, because I felt like I was learning a lot of theory and that's great, but to have the vendors be willing to donate time or to donate gear or to donate software so that I'm getting a chance to learn the theory, play with the actual technology, see what I can combine with what I'm learning learning in maybe areas mathematics, machine learning. It's, there's so much opportunity there. And yeah, we absolutely want to do what you said and reach to the, the students, the people coming up and encourage them to keep pushing some of those boundaries. So I think we all can agree that the field that we're in in technology is changing at a very rapid pace. I can't imagine how hard it is to keep up with the testing and the blueprints and the questions to make sure they're relevant, they're not outdated or stale. How do you manage that and with the constantly changing world of technology? Fortunately, the new portfolio has made it a little bit easier. We're getting close to doing a revisit of some of what we've got in our current certification and training to say, hey, here's what we need to add. I'll tell you one of the things we keep hearing, and I did a Cisco TV certification spot, and we got three Three different people ask questions of, hey, I need to know more about cloud, or cloud this and cloud that. So we absolutely know that we need to look at just about any of our certifications, even if you think, well, what about enterprise infrastructure? What do you need? Oh, well, we have SD-WAN in there and that can be deployed in the cloud. And we've got CSR 1000 Vs acting as gate. Well, that can be deployed. So we need to look at cloud certainly and multi-cloud connecting on-prem to cloud. So that's a technology area that we know we need to do. And fortunately, with the way we've done concentrations at the professional level, these smaller exams that you can take in addition to that technology core, we can add additional concentrations to add more in-depth or deeper dives into specific technology areas. We want to do the same thing with the CCIE. We realize we can't change things so rapidly that people can't prepare, but we do want to be able to fold in different components, even remove some components to keep those tests very relevant. And this is going to be tested fairly soon as we look to start doing these I would say more rapid revisits of our various technology tracks and what we need to change and how we need to rev that up. So what you're going to see are both blueprint changes, so the exam blueprints or exam topics as they're sometimes called, and you're going to see uh, training and relative to that change as well. And there's probably going to be a need for some additional Cisco Press authors to keep up to speed with new books and revisions of books relative to some of those exams as well. One of the things you mentioned kind of in your, your intro, certifications, especially the professional level, we went from four exams for the CCNP data center down to the core exam and then one specialization. So the breadth of the specialization exams with the changes that have been made has been really cool where you can focus on a specific thing, you pass the specialization, you get a certification for that, you pass the core, now you've got your CCNP where before it was you had to get all four exams passed before you got something. So not a question so much. It's just cool idea. I like the way that that's been implemented. Any of you been to Cisco Live, like an in-person Cisco Live? I have, yes. I have to admit I have, yes. <laughs> you have to admit you have. have. Have either of you seen anyone walking around Cisco Live with a ribbon on that said $1,600 lunch? Yes, I, I have. have. <laughs> I have not. Uh, so those are the people who went and sat for the CCIE lab and failed. Um, oh. So they went and they got a $1,600 lunch for their effort. And it was kind of a badge of honor. We didn't obviously make those ribbons. I think one of our CCIE advisory board people did. But you hit on one of the things, Dan, that we wanted to do, which was be able to create a certification for everything you achieve. People would put in their signature like CCIE written, and that's not a thing. It wasn't a thing. You didn't get anything for the CCIE written. And we realized that even passing some of those written exams, okay, you haven't gotten the full CCIE or CCMP yet, but you've done a lot of prep and you've put in a lot of work and we want to reward that. So for those technology cores, for each of those exams, you're right, you 
you get that specialist. But I did want to correct you on one thing. You said four exams for the data center. I'm going to take your word on that. I, I never took the CCMP data center, but there was probably four exams just for the CCMP, but there was a CCNA prereq that used to exist as well. So that was additional exams you had to take and we got rid of all those prereqs. So now if you feel you're at that professional level, you just go and you take the two exams for the CCMP data center and assuming you pass, you get it. So you hit on that kind of simplification angle that we were really striving for. And the CCNA data center, I think was two exams. So yeah, six exams total. Yeah, good times. Joe, just to follow up on the CCIE, I really value my CCIE achievement and I'm sure uh, Meredith has stories oh, on yeah. the blood, sweat and tears that has gone into her achievement as well. How is Cisco ensuring that it stays relevant? I know myself it's quite rigid. Are Cisco looking at other ways or initiatives to make it easier to consume? There's probably some stuff I can't say, so I'll be a little bit careful here. The CCIE is always held in a vault in a safe inside a volcano. But one of the things we definitely are going to do is that periodic, every six months, revisit some of the topics and be able to decide what we want to fold in or spin down in those tests so that people feel like I walked out of that. Yeah, I put in the work like you described, but I have something that's not just a piece of paper or certificate or a metal that it, it actually has real value and I, we just went through the process to do what we call the job task analysis for the devnet expert so that is coming up and I can say that the amount of time that goes into prepping those exams is almost equal to the time it takes to do study and, and complete them there's a lot of anguishing over what goes in talking to different SMEs both internally and externally to make sure that we have the right material at the right level to be able to be defensible and to be able to be relevant. And so that's why it takes a little bit of time to do that. And we also can't disrupt people studying as much, but it is about making sure that we're looking at the technology, the trends, what people are asking for, what Cisco admittedly is doing, and then being able to address that. Admittedly, some of the COVID stuff slowed us down, but now that we're kind of moving out of the pandemic mode, you should start to see some of those updates coming. Just one other small follow-up question. I know everyone loves hands-on labs, and it's great to see that coming out with the DevNet part of the study. So is that going to be built back into the exams at any time, that lab simulates? The CCNA, if I understand you correctly, we're doing what we call lablets in the CCNA starting there, and it will permeate into other exams. Unlike the simlet, you will actually get access to a real CLI running in like a virtual instance of iOS as an example, and you'll be given a task or set of tasks to do with that like configure VLAN trunking between these switch devices and they won't be like finite state machines that kind of act like iOS. There'll be enough CLI to cause you all sorts of consternation, but yeah, you'll be able to do that. And actually when you see on the blueprint, the verbs implement, configure, create, those action verbs, you will actually will be able to test you on that as part of the written type uh, exams. I'm really excited about that. So like, sorry, I haven't sat my CCNA in, oh, I can't remember, I can't remember when I did it, but it's actually one of those things. It's it's really good to see like that, that kind of evolution because I'm more of a hands-on person rather than just pure theory. So, and I, I did actually get to ask question from one of my colleagues yesterday. So since you brought it up and to all of you, what is the biggest pain you have with some of our exams? Not having maybe the ability to do things like with the Simlet or Lablet could be considered one, but what else have you, you think we should have fixed or should fix in our exams? I'm going to start this with a story. So back when I took my first, I first sat my CCNA exam. I was going in, you know, completely green, sat the exam. And at the time, when you're taking a test in school, when you get to a hard question, that's a time test. Skip the hard question, move on and come back. Every single sim, I'm like, that looks hard. I'll skip it and come back. I got Ooh. to the end of the test and realized it's adaptive. There's <laughs> no back button yeah so not necessarily something you can fix but just a lesson i learned the hard way i think that was the composite test at the time 225 bucks i think it was but there was no lunch so that was just a 225 trip <laughs> to a test site so yeah there's mine not something you can fix but we do it that way specifically so we can have certain types of questions live together in the exams i feel your pain though <laughs> Yeah, I remember that too, when that feature would kind of come and go, the back button. So as you've evolved the test-taking and 
solicited feedback from the community to how to make them better. You kind of had this unexpected need to pivot quickly when the pandemic hit and you couldn't do in-person testing at the testing centers anymore. So I took my DevNet exam from home, for example, and that was a different experience, but actually it was a very positive experience. I was quite nervous that something was going to break and I'd have to reschedule or start over, but it went really well. How do you see Cisco going forward with the potential tests at home and then as test centers are reopening, do you see some kind of hybrid or one direction or the other you're leaning? I think we will see a hybrid. What's interesting is I was shown some data yesterday. More people do seem interested in taking tests at testing centers. I think it's probably a composite of a few things. One, they don't have the kind of environment. I mean, you see behind me that I probably have to strip some things off the walls to make the proctors feel like, yeah, you're in a clean environment. They might not have good internet. They have too many distractions at home. So they, they like being able to go in. I'm sure the three of you could tell some interesting stories about how that is more of a distraction to go in. But I think what we're seeing is more people want to. However, the convenience of being able to test at home is fantastic. Some people don't live that close to testing centers, so I don't see this going away. We've got a system for it. Our partner Pearson View has that system. I think we're going to continue both, to be honest with you. That's great. Yeah, there's a little bit of setup, but for me, I just found it great that it wasn't like all the testing was canceled. It was, you guys pivoted and, and made it still accessible. And so I was really lucky. Yeah, I did the DevNet from home, same thing. It was surprisingly smooth to go through it. It went well when testing is back in physical locations. I don't necessarily know that I would continue to plan on doing them from home because for me, there's just going into a test site, you kind of have that mental shift of I'm at a site, it's go time, where sitting at home, it's like I could just, you know, go over there and play video games. So mm -hmm. there's kind of that mental shift. My view is slightly different. So I've had some interesting, entertaining experiences in test centers and it ranges from having stood walls that are really thin and people having meetings and laughing in behind those meetings so you have these really loud noises going on and like I feel like I should be part of that party or should I be sitting in this exam <laughs> or, or, or the other side of it is uh, you know people like you know they're all under a lot of stress and they have a bit of a freak out that's happened to me before as well look I know we have terms and conditions that we have to meet and yada 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 but it does happen unfortunately so as we talk yeah. about tests and the all the tests we've taken in our histories one of the things that had always kind of been the, what you did was you take a test and three years later you go well i got my ccna it's time to renew i'll go start working on my np to renew that and i know that there have been changes to the renewal program as far as continuing education the continuing education program that Dan mentions here offers all certification holders different options to recertify by completing a variety of continuing education items. To earn credits towards your certification, you can choose eligible courses currently produced by Cisco or by learning at Cisco Learning Partners, attend Cisco Live approved sessions, and by participating as an item author for development of professional certification exams. By earning continuing education credits through any one or combination of these methods, you will be able to recertify and maintain your certification. To learn more about the continuing education program, please visit cisco.com slash go slash continuing education. Can you kind of talk to that? I know people are doing it. It's new. I haven't dug too much into it, but could you kind of talk through that cert renewal without having to retest? Sure. When did you last recertify, Dan? The professionals would be two and a half years. And then the DevNet is an associate level, so that's brand new. Okay. How about you, Jonathan? When did you last research? It would have been like August of last year, or the year before, possibly. How'd you do it? Did you test? or? So actually, I always like okay. to challenge myself. So I tackle a different CCI written every single time after research. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. How about you, Meredith? I'm old enough that I've got lifetime emeritus now in my ah, CCIE. <laughs> very nice. Okay, so... You asked the question about continuing education. I thought with three people on this call, I figured one of them would have reserted with continuing education. So I have. I have CCIE route switch. I got it in 1999 and I used to take writtens. I wasn't a route switch dude, but back in TAC, in order to like move up career wise, you had to get a CCIE. So I was doing network management, Cisco works at the time. I studied BGP. I went and did it like, yay, I got it. Yay, I got promoted the next day. But I wanted to keep it up. It was a lot of work. So I kept it up and I kept testing in security. And then finally, in 2017, we came out with this program called Continuing Education. 
We recognize that your expertise or your certification, it took work. And we recognize that as you've grown in your career, maybe you've changed focuses or maybe you want to change focus and you want to learn new skills. You don't want to just give up. You don't just want to become a manager, let's say. You want to stay technical. You want to keep moving forward. And so just like doctors have to keep learning the latest and the greatest, attending seminars and practicing or keeping up with what the current ways of doing procedures are, we wanted to do that same thing for our certified individuals. So we initially launched it for the CCIE and whereby you could earn credits for taking courses, for going to Cisco Live, and for writing exam items. And if you earned enough of those credits, it was 100 at the time in a two year period or essentially a three year period because we have the suspend year, you could get recertified and you could do that without taking a written exam. So for the first time I needed to do it, which I think was 2017, I went and did the DevNet type stuff, which was called the MPDev and MPDesi at the time, Network Programmability for Engineers and for Developers. And I took the courses for that. Each were 50 credits and I got recertified. This time around, because it is about continued education, continual learning, I was doing more data center stuff, data center automation. I was playing with Hyperflex and I needed to learn that. So I went and took the courses for that and got the credits and recertified. This next time, uh, I've got a little bit of time now since the CCIE is now good for three years. I don't know. We'll see where I'm at and what I need to learn more of. But continuing education gives people that flexibility to say, you know what? I don't really want to be Jonathan. I don't really want to challenge myself with a new written every day. I want to learn something new. And maybe after I learn it, I will want to go take the exam for that and get additional opportunity for recertification by taking additional exams and building my pantheon of medals, you can do that. So we've made even that program more flexible by giving people more opportunity to recertify in different ways. And just even with continuing education initially, it was just you either recertified with continuing education or with an exam. Now you can do both. You can say, I'll take this one course, get some credit, and I'll take this exam. Together, those two things can earn enough overall credit equivalency or overall recertification requirement and I get to recertify. A lot more flexibility in that program. And I'm hoping that people like that. I've heard positive things so far. Like I said, I'm a, a bit stumped that I'm the only one on this call who's done it, but maybe Jonathan will consider it for his next time around. Or maybe, you know what? He'll do both. He'll do a little continuing education and then go challenge himself with that technology core in cybersecurity, let's say. Yeah, Joe, don't worry. I do like to have a play. So the challenge I have at the moment is my lack of available time because I'm usually either doing DIY or some crazy IoT shenanigans. But uh, just on that topic, actually, you know, I'm from the industrial space, right? And so the industrial space seems to be kind of a little bit left behind. Now, I'm not saying like well, there is certs, there has been certs, and I'm sure there will be more. And I actually just want to tap on that. So is there any other initiatives in the pipeline for industrial IoT or IoT certifications and, and like an evolution of that? Well, you've got one right now in the DevNet space for programmability related to the IoT space. So not IIoT per se, but IoT. There's a concentration. So it's a step towards your DevNet professional to get the IoT concentration in DevNet. We did have a certification prior to the, the February 24th cutover on IoT. I'll be honest, we weren't seeing as much interest in it. It's not to say that, again, we're continuing to look back at what the industry, what people looking to get certified, what they want, and you never know. We got now the structure that we could re-add something like that in the network engineer space, or if we see enough demand for it and we see it's unique enough from a job role perspective, which it might be, and certainly in IoT and certain in the industrial space, you could argue that what those people do, what you're doing is a little bit different than what your network engineer is doing. Just like with cyber, that could turn into a different realm. So we have the ways of doing it. We just need to see the demand. We need to see if you want to start like a Kickstarter for getting IoT back in, maybe, maybe we could do it. Would you fund it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll see what I've got yeah. in my chair back there in terms of uh, <laughs> coinage. If I donate like five bucks, do I just get the certification for free? <laughs> if you write enough questions for it. Ah. <laughs> and then like just, you know, from a DevNet standpoint, you know, I feel like having a computer science background as well, there's a really close tie-in with programming and cloud. And like cloud is such a hot topic and there's so many faces of cloud, like, you know, depending on who you are, you see it in a completely different way versus like, let's say a network engineer. 
do you see there's like synergy there and like potential to cross over and like with this modularity of the exams, you know, some sort of build up to a different certification there? Definitely. That is the DevNet side is where you'd think it naturally fits because sure, you can do things at the various cloud portals or control centers, click through the web type of thing. But if you really wanted to do things at scale, you're going to find yourself using something like Terraform or you're going to do Ansible or something that talks through the APIs, through the connector modules to deploy VMs or deploy compute, I should say, at scale, to spin up VPCs at scale, to be able to do that thing across multiple availability zones. So you've got high availability, do your load balancing stuff there. So I think, yes, the software side is a natural fit, but I also think there are networking tie-ins as well. I mentioned SD-WAN. There's also ways of deploying the next-gen firewalls, the firepower security side, and doing zero trust and SASE in the cloud. I think what you're going to see is it might start in DevNet, but we're going to see a dissemination or permeation of that into some of the other areas in the network engineer and in the cyber realms as well. So what do you guys working on for next. The DevNet launch was huge and there's so many opportunities for learning there and getting these well-recognized certifications that are becoming more and more common to for employers to understand what that means. Is there another sort of launch coming up or are you guys continuing to evolve the existing programs? We're continuing to evolve. We've made a commitment when we launched the DevNet, when we announced it in San Diego at Cisco Live 2019, that we would have an expert and we're working towards that. There's the potential for an expert in cyber as well, though I don't have any information on that. But the next absolute thing that we've already announced, there will be a new CCDE. So the CCDE was notably left off of the announcement in San Diego. We kind of said no changes at this time, but we always intended to do something there and refactor it a little bit to bring in some more architectural components and have that as well capture some of the newer industry requirements that a design expert would have. We have the blueprint, which is already out. I call it the blueprint. We call it that internally. The exam topics are already out on cisco.com for the new CCDE, and you can go and look at that. So that will be the next big thing. That exam going live will be the next big announcement that we're going to see. Great. Very exciting stuff. And that exam, the written for that exam, is still the one exam you can now take Jonathan, if you wanted to take a one exam and recertify your CCIE, it's still the CCDE written. Everything else right now would require two exams or an exam plus continuing education. Excellent. Thanks for letting me know. That's it for our episode featuring Cisco Champion Radio. If you'd like to check out other episodes from the Cisco Champion Radio podcast, please visit the link in the description of this episode. And if you'd like to find more discussions, news, and information about Cisco certifications, please visit the Cisco Learning Network at www.ciscolearningnetwork.com. There, you can find countless IT training videos and study groups that are organized by certification and technology. Finally, please subscribe to the Cisco Learning Network podcast to hear more from experts experts in the IT industry, as well as news and stories of others earning their certifications. Thanks for listening.